Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I, it's two o'clock, so let's call this meeting to order of the Stormwater Advisory Board here on March 6th, 2024. Thank you for coming or attending online. It's much appreciated. We don't have a huge agenda today, but um, let's get on through it. I'll open up right now the public comment period. So if we have anyone from the public that would like to comment on anything regarding stormwater, now would be the time to come forward. I don't think anybody's here. I don't know that anyone is online either. So hearing none, let's close the public comment period of the meeting. The second thing on the agenda is the approval of minutes and in your, your packet, your folder or packet are available on the table over on the what, north wall. The minutes are there from the last meeting. So we can take a moment and review those. And I'm happy to entertain a motion when everybody's had a chance to have a look at those. I motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Trevor, second. George is a second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is board member reappointments. Sam, that's you. All right, yeah. So uh, everyone's term is expiring at the end of the month. Um, and I have gotten word back from a few members on the board um, that would like to serve another term. So, you know, Stormwater Chef really appreciates you guys taking time on their schedules, serving on the board, coming to these meetings. Um, we really do appreciate that. Um, if you decide not to serve another term, um, just make sure you let me know as soon as you can. Um, so I can start working through the process to, uh, find a replacement. Um, one thing is, uh, as we all know, this is Chris Bohm's, uh, last meeting here, um, with Swab and, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but Chris, I think you've been with us since the beginning, right? The inception of SWAP. It started as a different group, actually. It was a. The technical advisory committee. Yeah, the technical yeah. advisory committee for the new drainage manual. And it started in that format and then it evolved into the stormwater advisory board, which was that came forward as part of the stormwater manual. So, yeah, it's been a while. Scott, how long is that been? Well, I, I think you're even part of the floodplain task force. I think that's right. Like 05, 04, or something like that. So you have 20 years um, on, uh, on, a, on a drainage committee. Well, seems like shorter, but uh, <laughs> you know, when you think about it. So yeah. anyway, yeah, it's been great. It's been great to serve in this position. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll, obviously, I haven't been here a very long time, so, um, but with my colleagues in Stormwater. I mean, they've always spoken very highly of you and you've done a lot for the city and for stormwater in general, drainage. And, and um, uh, I mean, you, you, you've got big shoes to fill, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out, but um, we really appreciate uh, everything you've done for SWAP. Thanks, Sam, I appreciate it. And I'll, the, the thing I'd like to say to everyone, including city staff, I think I said it at the last meeting, but I'd like to reiterate it. One of the coolest things I've been involved with in my career is this whole offsite BMP program. Because you take the Clean Water Act, you know, and it's turned into so many just check the boxes on a form. You've got to do this, or you've got to do that. You put in a hydrodynamic separator, or whatever. And I think it's easy for a, any bureaucracy, not in a bad way, just the governmental agencies to say, here's the form, use the things and fill it out and then we move on down the line. But the really cool thing about what we created as a stormwater advisory board with that offsite BMP program 
is something that truly follows the spirit of that legislation. It does more than what is asked. And it's a very simple, very elegant solution to the problem. And it helps in the agricultural community as well. So I'd have to count that as one of my best achievements on the stormwater advisory board and, and being an engineer, just that it's just a great program. So thanks to all and for the city of Wichita, KDHE and EPA for opening their minds to it and not just sitting and thinking, well, we've got a checklist already, so let's just use it. But to be open to that, I think it's outstanding. So many thanks to all. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I do want to say then for anyone who is staying on the board, um, we'll be working to reappoint everyone together at the next meeting. Um, I'll get in contact with the city clerks and they've uh, stated that they'd like to go ahead and get it all taken care of at once, right? So to save everyone here the time and having to come to city hall on their own and all that. Uh, so I look forward to that at the next meeting is anyone who's staying on, um, We'll dedicate some time to reappointing everyone as well. If we have recommendations for people, sure, can we give them to you. Please let me know. Yeah, look we'll at the different agencies that appoint and see if yeah. you can link people up. Okay, that'd be great. I appreciate that, Chris. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, next up on the agenda is the EPA construction general permit update. Mark, that's you, so take it away, please. All right, well, you know, uh, as things go along and as check boxes are added, <laughs> talk about check boxes, um, EPA is all about uh, going through and they'll come back through and look and see is there anything that needs to be updated? Is there anything that's that, you know, maybe is outdated? Uh, are there ways that we can put our thumb on people in a different direction, maybe? Um, you know, to try to, to try to achieve uh, whatever goal they're, they're trying to achieve. And with the EPA general construction permit, uh, the changes to it were so minor this this time. Um, you know, they're they're looking towards some different things. Uh, you know, they're looking at total daily maximum loads and those kinds of things, and maybe putting some parameters in in for that but at a later period for stormwater they're already doing that for for uh, the sanitary folks but uh, the stormwater side they're potentially looking at those kinds of things uh, PFAS is a big big thing that they're really looking at now that you know the forever chemicals uh, and how they get into the get into the, the stormwater system and how they can travel and get in everywhere so uh, I would expect legislation to come through on some of that probably within the next 15 to 20 years, but I don't see it right away. Uh, and then the next one is also mine, which is an MS4 permit update. Um, the city of Wichita, along with everyone else, I know Scott reapplied for the county's uh, MS4 permit. Uh, we reapplied, we're, we were successful. Um, KDHE came back with a few changes that that it initially looked like they were really going to be a challenge for us to, to deal with and that we might have to add staff. But then after after visiting with KDHE and talking with our legal department and all of those things, it's really going to be a moot point uh, at this point. So, you know, the, the permit uh, was updated and it's good for another five years. So we're, we're good to go on the MS4 permit at this point. No need to add any staff or anything like that. Uh, it's not mandatory that we do that. Of course, Troy and I would like to be able to add some staff, but you know, it's one of those things you could like to do something all day long, but you don't, you don't have the resources. To do that, so. <laughs> yes. so anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, yeah, there is one thing uh, towards the end of 23, uh, several of us went up to Topeka to speak directly with KDHG. Uh, we do intend to continue doing that at least annually to make sure that we stay on top of any changes that are pending and uh, ensure that you know, we're not just complying with but going above and beyond with the permit. Uh, but as Mark had said, any changes in the permit at this point it shouldn't have any resource impacts. It's just uh, maybe tracking down information that we know already exists. Uh, for example, you know, 
how would the fire department respond to a spill event uh, that occurs out on the roadway? I mean, we know they have their hazardous materials response team and uh, get SOPs for all of that. Right. So there's a little bit of uh, paperwork that needs to be done, but primarily it was uh, seemed to be at least driven. Uh, the changes seem to be driven by a desire to explicitly state things that uh, the EPA had advised should be called out within the permit. But thankfully, we were uh, already in compliance with everything we really saw. So, uh, not much to be concerned about. And given this approach of trying to work, uh, well, of working hand in hand with uh, KDHG, trying to make sure we're ahead of things. Uh, if there are any policy changes or uh, regulatory uh, reinterpretations, we'll put it, we should know about that ahead of time and be able to pursue any measures that would be necessary. Okay. I mean, is there anything that you see on the horizon in regards to changes to the MS4 permit in the next five years or? Well, I don't see a change in the next five years, and, and they they brought us out of cycle because uh, we were supposed to be good through the end of this of this calendar year, but they brought us in out of cycle because they want to take phase one and phase two communities and start separating them to where that they can have some coming due at different times. That way, they don't have every single permit in the state of Kansas come and do at the same time because that really just runs their staff ragged. Hey, there are no uh, major changes that we expect to be implemented in the coming five years. I think uh, we've already mentioned some, the PFAS, PFAS, something that's on everybody's radar. Uh, I'll talk about this a little bit later on, but uh, we see a lot of articles, uh, academic or otherwise, about climate change, impacts on floodplains, things like that. So there's uh, there are definitely a lot of eyes on uh, you know, potential impacts uh, caused by climate change and that sort of thing. But uh, the type of regulation that would be needed for those topics, it's not going to be put together in a year or two or even three. I mean, it's going to be potentially decades to try and get a handle on something like how do you clean up uh, forever chemicals, especially when they're still being introduced, uh, you know, in, in a market setting. And uh, so there are big, hairy issues that we know are on the horizon, but there's just no way those can be uh, focused on and converted into a coherent policy or regulatory framework uh, in, in the foreseeable future. Okay. You know, Don Kirkland, if I'm not mistaken, and looking at some of the, the on the clean one, I mean, on the, the, the side, uh, you know, one of the big deals there had been for years is the pharmaceuticals and the, and, the, and, the, and the streams, but there's still collecting data to try to figure out, okay, how are we going to regulate this and what are we going to regulate? So, uh, there's not really enough information yet to, to, to really do much with it. No. With your experience, I'm sure you saw many times a desire to tackle a particular uh, you know, element out in the environment, and uh, then you know, there would be full speed ahead, a pause, uh, rethinking of how can we practically tackle these issues. And so I, I think your experience, I mean, you can validate that uh, it, it just takes a lot of time to uh, try to address some of these issues that didn't build up overnight. To a lot of the easy stuff has already been done. Right. <laughs> I think Gary O'Borney is joining us now. He was in the waiting room and he texted me to let me know. So, okay. Yeah, Chris, Chris, I'm in. Oh, hey, Gary. Good to see you. Talk to Allison. Me so. too. Thank you. Oh, is Allison, is she in now too? Yeah. Okay, very good. Hello, Allison. Hello. Um, we were just talking about anything on the horizon with the MS4 permits that we see. And Wichita said not particularly right now, but plastics and, and 
Dawn brought up the idea of pharmaceuticals in the water supply. And Scott, I guess I'd kick it to you about the county, MS4, same, same story. Same thing, it's uh, uh, more education outreach uh, that we're gonna have to be doing uh, moving forward. Our permits do it uh, good until 2028. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's a five year permit as well. All right. How about the next item on the agenda, which is minimum flood standard update? Yep. Uh, that plays right into what we were just talking about. Last meeting, there was a discussion about this topic, some of uh, the efforts that have been undertaken in recent years, and then it was asked that this just be put on as a rolling item for each meeting. Uh, we have no solid updates, but again, we are starting to see more and more general articles in the media, more articles academically about climate change and in particular impacts on uh, floodplains, how that might affect modeling going forward. Uh, but at this point, like with other topics, hey, there's nothing pending. We've not seen anything uh, either with FEMA or uh, Department of Water Resources under KDA here in Kansas to suggest that there's going to be uh, a major change in approach. Uh, the floodplains will continue to be mapped and remapped. And, uh, it's worth watching to see if there is a policy impact on FEMA procedure or procedure at the state level uh, that might impact floodplains. Uh, it, as far as staff goes, you know, we monitor because we want an accurate floodplain map. We don't want it to be overly conservative. We don't want it be, to be, uh, uh, you know, extremely risky. It's about having accuracy so that we can avoid uh, you know, structural flooding and things of that nature going into the future. Uh, so we're going to continue to monitor uh, those types of matters. Uh, we don't think that there are going to be any formal changes pushed down from the federal level to the local level, uh, at least in the near future. But again, there are a lot of topics. These are the hot topics that we hear about regularly, and it's important that we just continue to monitor so that if there is uh, a trend, worrisome or otherwise, that we're able to communicate ahead of any major implementations. Uh, yes, there, there is uh, a couple of physical map revisions that are going on in Central County. Uh, and I'm sure the city is aware of it as well. Uh, uh, out there in Fort Mile Creek, it impacts the county as well as the city. Right. And then also the uh, Big Slough North, which impacts kind of the maze, maze northwest Central County area. And uh, B, uh, KDA is working on that. And I, I heard from them probably in the next few months, they're going to be having uh, Probably a public meeting to talk about uh, changes. The modeling has been completed. Now they're in the process of uh, uh, getting it put on a map, flood map, floodplain map. And I know there was talk about a big stormwater detention facility, like up at 21st and 180. 167. Yeah, yeah. 13th and 167. Yeah, 13th. Okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, both the city and the county have applied for a, a, a grant from the FEMA and uh, applied a couple times. Troy, Troy led that effort and you know, right. talk more about it. Than I like successfully that. led that effort twice. And we've learned a great deal about uh, at least how it seems the region is viewed uh, when we're competing against coastal communities or others that have documented recurring losses, recurring flooding events uh, in localized areas. We just don't have the recurring loss, repetitive loss in uh, much of the areas that we're trying to target. So Wichita uh, will face challenges to try and access some of the federal funds that uh, say uh, Houston or uh, Philadelphia had a neighborhood. I spoke with uh, their stormwater lead and trying to determine what our challenges and opportunities might look like. They had a neighborhood that 
uh, basements routinely flood. Uh, so, you know, there are things we could do. Uh, trying to have shovel ready projects. Uh, you know, there are different strategies we could employ, greater local match, but all of that involves resources that just aren't readily available. So uh, we're going to continue to work on it, uh, depending upon other regional project priorities. There may be some opportunities in the future, but uh, Wichita flat. We have routine flooding, uh, but a lot of it's classified as more of the nuisance variety. Uh, because of the wisdom of people that came before me, the rules that have been in place, uh, thankfully we don't have a lot of repetitive loss involving structures, but uh, unfortunately not having that history, negative history, uh, tends to harm our chances of getting some of those larger federal dollars that uh, you know, we would like to access. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Just was curious where that all fit in the world. So. Right. Okay, great, many thanks. Sure. Next up is the offsite BMP program update. And we have been talking about retroactive enrollment and potential of other communities taking this on as a policy or, or a tool. So, so, um, I can't recall if at our last meeting I had given the KSP presentation. That was right around the same time. The same time. Yeah. Uh, so there uh, continues to be calls for presentations about uh, this program, you know, as you put it, this is a, a great program. It's beginning to be recognized more broadly for being innovative and um, various benefits, environmental, being more cost effective, flexibility within uh, you know, our regulatory framework. So it seems like it's been accepted as a, a, a very uh, valuable program for Wichita that can be applied elsewhere. I'll start off with the retroactive enrollment piece. Uh, you know, we've, we've talked this one to death. And, uh, Joe Pickle went through and uh, Stormwater, we spent quite a bit of time looking at the numbers and found uh, that there really weren't any major uh, you know, detrimental impacts uh, of allowing retroactive enrollment of acres that were developed, uh, that had on-site BMPs installed, uh, especially those that installed them when, uh, after water quality requirements went into place and before the off-site BMP program was available. Uh, we know that there is interest from some to uh, convert over to the off-site BMP program. That may or may not mean removal of the infrastructure. Uh, there may be a desire to keep the infrastructure in place, but avoid the uh, inspection process and keeping things certified. So uh, at this point, uh, I think we're ready to move forward as staff. Uh, those that are interested in retroactive enrollment, uh, we've kind of locked in on a $250 permit processing fee. And, that would be the one time fee to roll over that would cover staff costs, fuel incidentals, things of that nature to make sure that uh, we are properly evaluating the request and putting any measures in place that are necessary to safeguard that property as well as surrounding properties uh, you know, from any unintended consequences of changing over. And then they would just enroll in perpetuity into what is now $19 per acre uh, annual fee. Uh, that's just tacked onto the water bill. I think we're all pretty familiar with that. Uh, high level procedure. We'll have an, a, a requirement for some sort of engineered plan that gets submitted to, uh, to Joe, stormwater engineer. Uh, and then we would want to know the original site permit uh, number so that we could compare uh, the available information from the old permitting document with the new plan. Uh, and make sure that all regulatory requirements would continue to be met. Uh, that's a, a critical 
uh, requirement for any conversion request to be authorized. We went over this uh, somewhat briefly. We've had a few changes and uh, I can elaborate, but this is again very high level. Uh, each case, it's going to be case by case basis, but uh, in general, the open spaces, green spaces can be left in place. We're not advocating for those to be removed. We think that those are a good thing uh, from an aesthetic and an environmental perspective. The hydrodynamic separators, in most cases, it makes sense to have removal. Uh, we did briefly talk about last uh, at our last meeting whether or not someone could leave it in place. I'll be totally honest. I think that uh, that request is something that could be approved, but it puts uh, risk on to the property owner because if they don't keep up with it, if it sediments in and that results in uh, improper drainage and that causes harm to a neighbor and then people come to uh, the city of Wichita and say, what are you going to do about it? We're going to say it's a private matter. They're supposed to maintain their on-site infrastructure. Uh, so uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether there will be a strong push to leave things in place or if uh, what I would guess would happen most of the time, there would be a desire to go ahead and remove uh, that infrastructure and then connect with just a, a drainage inlet and pipe uh, to connect to the MS4. Snouts, we think that they probably could be left in place and uh, it could also be removed. So that uh, this speaks to, I'm not going to say that we have a prescriptive absolute, you know, requirement for any particular type of infrastructure at this point. It's about maintaining uh, regulatory compliance, which was attained by putting infrastructure in place. So we're moving away from that. We're going to want to look at the situation to make sure that whatever is done is reasonable and then any long term maintenance requirements are spelled out uh, clearly so that there is no confusion about expectations going forward. So, uh, we're thinking word of mouth. Uh, not necessarily going out and sending out a mass mailer at this point. You know, that there are many different things on all of the staff members' plates at this point, and uh, getting flooded with requests uh, for them. That's why we think uh, word of mouth is the way to go. That also gives the ability for those that are ultra eager to be first in line to come uh, work through the bugs with us. and. Uh, I uh, <laughs> you know, their experiences can be shared. We're, we're going to obviously make an attempt to make this as simple as possible for everyone. Uh, we believe that having that engineered plan will take nearly all of the risk out of uh, the request and uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to be reasonable uh, and reasonable means regulatory compliance. Uh, and trying to uh, make people's lives easier for regulatory compliance going forward. So any questions on, on this? No questions, but I do have a comment in talking about uh, this program within the community, which I do with uh, groups and stuff. Um, a, a couple of people came back and said, wouldn't it be nice for those who meet the regulatory requirements and are enrolled in the program to have a little sign that says, you know, good, good citizen. Um, some way of rewarding them that, and letting everybody else know that this particular property is meeting these stormwater requirements. So that's just a comment. And Kay, I, to speak to that, we have talked about that internally uh, to, to maybe have, because Tad, who was on one of the slides there earlier um, with Tad. He is our spokesperson, our spokes frog. I uh, say, yes. <laughs> for water. We've thought about having uh, a window sticker that someone could put in the window of their business that says Tad approves City of Wichita Stormwater, you know, something like that. We've talked about that. We haven't, we haven't done that yet, but we have talked about doing something like that. <clears throat> you know, there'd be certain criteria that they'd need to meet and, you know, and we would, Give them their TAT approved designation. You know, and it, it just lets other 
people know that Wichita is doing this. You know, it's kind of self-advertisement, but it's still, um, right now a lot of people don't know that Wichita is doing much in the way of uh, sediment control and that sort of thing. There's another piece that's on, you know, on an update to the offsite BMP program is in your pack that you got today. You should have a couple of different pages um, of the updates of just kind of the numbers since inception. So it's June 1 of 2016 through January 1 2024. You know, we've got the total number of, of enrolled uh, locations at 299, total number of uh, enrolled acres is 1,231, which we based our target to achieve starting out at about 200 acres of development annually. And if you divide that by seven years, that's uh, 175 acres a year that have come in. Uh, and that's part of the reason why we see that there's, you know, we've got five years there between 2011 and 2016 uh, that, you know, we feel that, that the retroactive acres, there's room for that to come into this program because, uh, you know, the folks at K-State have got some more, uh, more acreage out there and, uh, you know, upfront development costs. And I just found a typo between one page one and page two. Uh, page one, it should be eight million two hundred and eighty-five million. Key takeaway with all of this that has been saved for upfront upfront costs. We periodically update. I mean, these are boilerplate play documents. We typically just keep internal, but we thought it was uh, you know prudent to go ahead and share with everyone so that you know that we do track this information, typo or otherwise. Uh, it still suggests millions and millions of dollars saved uh, for the development community. The sediment, uh, you know, control factor is substantial. Uh, this program, you know, it, we should be proud of it, and it checks off all the boxes, regulatory as well as uh, ease of compliance for the community. Uh, so the, the first, the first page, that last number is the one that that really speaks volumes to this program. Uh, additional sediment that was removed in tons, you know, based on modeling, that's over 1,097 tons. More than we needed. More than right. we needed was removed by this program. So, I mean, I think that's, I think that's something for this program and the folks on the swap who, who put this thing together to be proud of, because that's, that's really in my, in, in my pea brain thinking, that's what EPA is looking for. They're looking for that less sediment in the, in the, in the system. So we've got that, you know, extra tons coming out that we don't have to take out that are coming out naturally through the whole program. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. I'll be brief on the small community expansion piece. Uh, we thought that these documents might be helpful as all of you have your different networks, different professional organizations that uh, you participate in. Knowing that this information is available, uh, you, know, yeah, you can either try to interpret some of the numbers and directly communicate that, or if there are interested parties and they want to know, they can give us a call. We're more than happy to uh, explain the program in detail. And uh, there has been some interest, you know, continual interest expressed by smaller communities. The uh, hesitancy there is, well, I only have X number of uh, instances annually. It's not worth my time. Uh, Wichita by no means plans to take the lead for the state or even for the region. We have uh, our own permit to comply with, but uh, there has been you know, a little bit of discussion about maybe the small communities could band together uh, and given enough uh, you know, volume, uh, they could then have their, you know, a small community focused program, but all of that's just been you know, passing discussion. There's uh, been no one that's raise their hand yet to say, I want to take the lead on trying to organize and get this in place for the small communities of either uh, a region or statewide. But uh, 
given that this conversation keeps coming up time and again, I'm not going to be surprised if someday uh, we see a cooperative program in place that is very similar to what was put in place in Wichita. No major updates. Again, nothing definitive, but uh, conversation continues and has done so since we met last. Other comments? Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you for the updates. Um, well, here we are. We're a little bit ahead of schedule, which is nice. Um, do we have any new action items we need to add to the next agenda? Uh, we'll need to um, reappoint the appointments okay. and uh, determine who the next chair will be. We'll elect an other, uh, elected chair yeah. and, a vice, and a vice chair, I'm sure, as well. We'll get on the we'll get on the uh, retroactive enrollment program because that's been implemented now. Yeah. The program itself, the offsite BMP program, is running very well. There haven't been really any significant modifications to the drainage manual, correct? That have been requested. We've pretty much taken care of, of all of that as it's come up. No, no updates for the MS4 require anything to be changed on the manual. So right. we're good there guidelines as far as BMPs and things that we've discussed within this group uh, remain the same. There's no, uh, at least to date, there's been no, no one voicing a request to modify those. Uh, so I think we have a fairly well cooked program that will probably be kind of in a status quo stage for some time. Uh, some of those bigger issues that we talked about earlier that aren't directly applicable to the MS4 manual or the, the stormwater manual yet uh, are the things that in the distant future probably will require the uh, take up specific discussions about uh, the applicability of a particular means of compliance. But uh, like we've said that's probably years off. And, and at some point, we may want to go back through and look at potential decommissioning requirements in the manual, requirements for the BMPs in the manual, but <coughs> we may, look, may want to look at decommissioning requirements, those kinds of things as well. But like, like Troy says, I don't think we need to do that at this point. It's just a case by case. And Mr. Hickel's smart enough to figure all that out. So right. we're going to let him figure it out. Right, Joe? Well. Um. <laughs> what about the frequency of the meetings? If these things are relatively well ironed out, are we are we like legally required to meet once a quarter or could you do two per year? Mm -hmm. As we look to the next agenda or do you want to do one in in three months and get the new members seated and then make those decisions at that time? A suggestion and that is since we've uh, made it past a lot of the more pressing topics that uh, staff goes away from this meeting. We look at the particular requirements for this board. I don't think that there's anything that requires quarterly meetings or anything more frequent, uh, but we can communicate what that is. And if there's not a requirement, I still think uh, probably every six months is prudent, but uh, that's just so that we can get the you know, administrative tasks for the board just to keep it going. And then uh, any of these items like um, floodplain standards, I might actually have something to report in six months, but I'm not confident about three months. Okay. Uh, if something came up where you needed input quicker than that, we could always do it on schedule. Absolutely. Right. I was going to say the city of Wichita probably doesn't need the points, but one of the BMPs is have a citizen advisory board meeting. Uh, I'm not sure if the Wichita uses that and right. takes credit for it, but in, in that it says it states uh, I know that they wanted they, they want the county to have a citizen advisory board meeting, which we do have. It's SMAP, uh, but, but uh, uh, 
in that states it should meet a minimum of four times. Uh, so um, I, take a look at that. See what take a look. Okay, that's what ours. Uh, said. I, I, I thank you for bringing that up. I uh, wasn't aware if that's a requirement. If that's points that we need to uh, have, uh, maybe. Uh, we were required to have 45 points this year, and I claimed 90. Right. So I think we're okay with the points, but uh, if there's, we'll look at our regulations and we'll let everybody know if we, how many points was that? It's just a couple. Uh, I think it's three, two or three, something like that. Which is probably not pressing. I still think six months may make sense for this entity. If we were to meet more often, uh, you know, perhaps we could do a, a teams every other time or something. I sure. uh, know that everybody's busy and you know, we don't want to take uh, up all of your busy, you know, up your, uh, your day uh, with uh, a meeting if we don't have anything really to discuss and we are still maintaining our points to continue with compliance. Uh, so, I, I don't know. Does anyone think we need to meet more often than six months, uh, every six months? Let's, let's take a look at everything and then uh, look and see if it's a city requirement, if it's a requirement of the permit, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And then uh, we'll advise. Yeah, we'll advise. So set a meeting based on that investigation. Right, right, right. Okay, the next meeting date yeah. is to be determined. To be determined is a good way to put it. Either three months or six months, probably. I think that's prudent. And it may be prudent to go ahead and do the three months so that we have a new chair and set it for going six months if that's the, that's the case. You don't want to get people here physically to get be sworn in. Right. So, you know, the ideal thing would be that everybody could meet in person again and get sworn in in their position. And barring any major issues that come up between now and then, it could be a very brief meeting. We can schedule it accordingly. Get in and out. Anything else for an agenda for the next meeting? Set a schedule with the next meeting. Chair, vice chair appointments, new member appointments. If there are specific topics that come up. Uh, please email them either to myself or to Sam, and uh, we can keep a running list. But uh, please don't email everybody because of the open meeting uh, and record retention requirements. Uh, Would that be an agenda item for the next meeting is to go over the open record meeting requirements, what we have to do, what the board has to do to meet those requirements. That would be on that we agenda. We have some new members that need to know. You will have new members, so yeah, you better go through that again. That's right. I forgot about that part of it. Catch. Yep. That's why you need to come back and be the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll listen in. <laughs> um, part of that public. I'll come pick. I'll come make some public comments. All right. That's our final. What else? Any other things on the horizon? Things you want to add? Pleasure of the board here. Anything you want to add to the agenda for the next meeting? Hey, Chris. Have have we had an update? Uh, I know on our last meeting uh, we had uh, we inquired about uh, any feedback on FEMA and what the status was with uh, that particular past item. And I think we were going to have staff is going to check on and get an update on that. Yeah, Troy did an update a little bit earlier, Gary, on that. Okay, sorry. I Must have been when I was in the waiting room. Yeah, you're good. Uh, the quick rundown is nothing explicit that's been provided to communities, uh, but everything we're seeing shows that it continues to be a, an area of focus for a number of different regulatory entities, EPA, uh, CORE, FEMA. They're all looking at issues surrounding floodplain standards, impact of climate change, uh, we do not foresee any major policy changes in the near future, but it's something that that narrative uh, continues and 
that could lead to at least policy recommendations uh, that might affect communities such as Wichita in the longer term. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, if there's nothing else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn. Okay, discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Same sign. No. All right. Thank you, everybody. Efficient, quick meeting. There is a cake and some cookies. Over there. Right, and let's go have some cake and cookies. <laughs> that sounds really good to me. Thank you for that. We do want you to know we appreciate all the work that we've done uh, over the years being involved with this board and prior to its inception. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's been an honor to be involved. And Wichita has been so attentive to trying to make the proper change. It's just, you know, it's great to see. It's great to see the collective effort. Thanks, everybody who joined online. Many thanks to you. Oh, yeah, he'll take those.